Reunion, the roll. reunion planned out there at uh, Salt Lake with uh, with Tommy or uh, yeah, yeah. you got Mike and Tommy. On yeah, there? yeah. No, we've uh, been on a text uh, <laughs> uh, thread, hot and heavy, getting months through uh, everything. That was a glorious uh, evening last night. Just watching that, it was incredible. So really, really cool to see. Everybody was fired up for that. I'm guessing you don't envy those two guys having to play each other with their relationship. No, and it, yeah, there's a little distance between Tommy and Munz, but you know, actually Munz was had agreed to have Tommy come on up here, and then uh, uh, you know he took off from Minnesota, and so I had to call him after he left. I'm like, what the hell's the deal with this guy? You said he's <laughs> hanging out around here, and then obviously Tommy ended up just being just spectacular. Uh, for Gonzaga and all of us and, and uh, certainly down in Arizona too but it's, yeah so but so yeah it, it's a loose connection but and connection nonetheless Leon versus Billy in the first four yeah, games yeah I, I tell you what I don't want to get on too much of a soapbox but Leon that's one of the worst screw jobs I've seen man I mean they I mean they had a heck of a year and swept some of the teams that are four or five seeds ahead of them and uh yeah, that, that one was shocking. So, but I was glad to see Tad get in and uh, Billy get in. So, yeah, it's funny, man. When you got all your buddies in this thing, you you don't want to play them, and you're but then you're also rooting for them to get a good seed. And if they get a good seed, you're probably gonna have to play them. And so it's it's a little dizzy watching that thing. So, but hey, for us to be in Salt Lake, and I think they rewarded us for us going out and playing people in the non-conference and. Uh, uh, and look, I say this every year, it's just such a blessing to be involved in this thing. And, you know, I think not maybe you people, but everybody has a tendency to take it for granted. I get people running up to me, just can't wait for March Madness, you know, they're telling me that in July. And I'm just like, no, you got to earn your way into that. You don't just get it. So and obviously there were times this year when it didn't seem like it, might happen so hopefully that was a good kind of way to get our get us back level and set to really really appreciate moments like this and, and to be involved in I think the greatest sporting event there is and and, uh, and you know and then another thing I will say and then the matchup pops up and you're like oh boy and then your stomach starts going and uh, obviously this is a really uh, a team that's won a lot of games and plays a really interesting style. They're going to climb up into us and, and uh, uh, you know, got a lot of quickness and a lot of talent. Um, so it'll be a it'll be an interesting challenge and, and probably something a lot different than what we've faced uh, all year. What's the satisfaction level for you doing it this way? Not smooth sailing. They're going to be a one seed. Yeah, and yeah. get through all the bumps and kind of get where you're at now. But yeah, is there an advantage to having a thicker height on a team? I, I don't know about advantage. I mean, I tell you, just you know, it just makes you think introspectively, you know, to really appreciate everything and 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 to really appreciate this group because they were under a, a ton of scrutiny that really they didn't, you know. They didn't have anything to do with those previous teams. They're their own team, you know, and they had to embark on their own journey. And those other teams were so good and so incredible. And that, you know, that's a tough, tough to always have to live up to that. But they, they figured it out, man. We dug our heels in, and and they, I, I'll give them credit. They listened all year. They were coachable all year. They were, they hung with it. And I mean, imagine. You told me at the end of the year we'd have to, you know, go on the road on the other two best teams in the league and beat them, uh, you know, to get it back. And then the week before, go to Kentucky. I mean, we've never had to do that now. So uh, I'll always remember that. And, uh, and and now we're, you know, now we're back where we're, you know, comfortable being and we're, we're used to this. And, and uh, but we have to go out and play. You got to go out and play. You got to play good. If you, can't, if you don't play good, you're, you're done. So. What was the message after the St. Mary's game to the team, and what will be the message sort of going forward heading up to Thursday? Uh, the message was easy after the St. I, I told them, like, hey, listen, everything, I've, I've told them this numerous times this year, is everything's still in front of you. Everything that we're all about and all we really, really want and care about is still in front of us. And the reason it's in front of it now is because you guys 
did what I just described. I mean, you you got it done. You know, you put us in position where we could drop a game in the conference tournament. And I, I think there was a good stretch this season where nobody thought that was even possible. And so you deserve all the credit for that. So don't be hanging your head. And I uh, just told them, you know, we didn't, we didn't do what we'd been doing prior to that game. And so it's kind of a anomaly. Let's correct it and go out and get ready to roll. So that's kind of where we're at. How big was Munns to your career? Uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't have had a career without Munns. He's the one who suggests, uh, you know, told Fitz to hire me. And Dan was basically the guy hiring the position, you know, because I kind of had to, I reported to him and brought me up here, no money. Um, let me sleep on his couch in his apartment, and, and we did that for two years. And then I moved up and gave me cheap rent when he bought a house and we moved out of the apartment after I got broken into a couple times. And, uh, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, hey, I, I owe my whole career to him. I mean, he gave me a start and all that. So that's why that was just so powerful last night watching that. Um, it was something. I think a lot of people came into the year and maybe projected you guys to be a top 15, top 10 team with all the transfers. But I mean, Graham was out for a year, came back, and Ryan, new position. Nolan's kind of taken on a new position, still gets hurt. Um, how much adversity do you, you think this team had to kind of go through to get to this point? Yeah, and again, I, I just say that preseason stuff is just, you know, come on, man. Um, uh, you lose a guy like Drew Timmy, and then, I mean, Julian's in the you know, first round pick, and then, you know, Malachi and, and Razier, I mean, it was, we lost, we lost shooting, we lost talent, we lost incredible persona and, and personality and competitive fire, and so there was a lot of stuff, I mean, we lost a lot, probably as much as I can remember uh, here, and we've had some big losses over the years with guys moving on to the NBA or just moving on, and, and uh, so, I mean, I think we all knew it would take a little bit of time. And, and obviously with Grant or Graham situation, you know, I, I think even I forgot he hadn't played in a year, so I knew that would take time. But he also did a good job of just powering through, staying healthy. You know, it was, it was a long haul just getting him comfortable to play on the foot and play. So, and I, I just I give my guards credit for being incredibly resilient. We played them a lot, played them a lot of minutes. We, they took all the minutes of practice. It's hard to get them out of reps and practice. And, you know, God blessed us with just great health this year, to be honest, because we could not afford any type of, uh, you know, injury, especially after stealing. You know. Talking about expanding the tournament, and I'm wondering if you watched all the chaos yesterday and thought, let's keep everything how it is. It kind of works together. I mean, it does when you make it. I mean, if you're sitting on the outside, I mean, you know, that's not a great feeling. So I, I, I agree. I've always been one that uh, I like it how it is because I mean, you have to really, really earn it. You have to earn it all season, whether it's playing great non-conference schedule or knocking it out in your, uh, in your league or, or both. Uh, but, you know, that's a hollow feeling when you don't make it. I think there's, you know, there's certainly more teams this year than ever. It was interesting to hear the committee chair say that they've never had a, you know, a situation like this where there was five teams that knocked people out. I mean, usually it's one or two. And uh, that's hard. I mean, I feel for those teams that didn't make it, especially like in Indiana State. What do you think St. Mary's will face coming to the arena this week? <laughs> I mean, I hope our, our people root for them. I hope. I mean, Randy's done a great job, and they're, uh, you know, I, I have ultimate respect for them, and they're a good group of guys. They play basketball, you know, the, the right way. They're smart. They're tough. They're, you know, so, I mean, I hope the Zag fans get behind. They should. <laughs> Go ahead.